What's up guys, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you a really simple method of adding a time rate to your game mechanics. So for example, it could be a shoot rate that controls the rate at which a weapon fires bullets, or it could be a footstep rate that controls the rate at which footstep sounds are played, and so on. This simple method can be used in many different ways. So let's begin. Right click in the project panel, click create, sprites, square. This is going to create a square sprite asset for us. Name it whatever you want. Then drag and drop the square sprite asset into the scene. This is going to create a sprite game object for us. Add a box color. Collider 2D to this game object, make a duplicate of it and bring it down here and stretch it out. This is going to be our ground game object, so rename this game object to ground, rename the other game object to player, and with the player game object selected, add a rigid body 2D component to it. Set the gravity scale for the rigid body 2D component to 9, and then add a new script to this player game object, call it jump rate script 01. Open this up in mono develop. Now, this is going to be a really simple script. We're going to start by adding a couple of variables. Type public float current time, then public float jump timestamp, then public float jump rate, then private rigid body 2D, R body 2D, then public float jump force. In the start method type R body 2D equals get component rigid body 2D. Basically we're just adding a reference to the rigid body 2D component attached to this game object. In the update method type current time equals time dot time. Time dot time is basically the elapsed time in seconds or the amount of time in seconds that this game has been running. The only reason I'm storing this value in current time is so that we can see this value in the inspector. Then type if input.get key, key code dot space. Now it's important to understand the difference between get key and get key down. Get key basically tells you if this key is already being held down during this frame, while get key down tells you if the key was pressed during this frame. So we want to find out if the space key is already being held down during this frame. If it is, then if time dot time is greater than jump timestamp, then our body 2d dot add force vector 2 dot up multiplied by jump force. Here we are basically adding a force in the upwards direction. And finally, jump timestamp equals time dot time plus jump rate. That's it. Hit save. And real quick, I'm going to go over the script. In the start method, as I mentioned earlier, we are adding a reference to the rigid body 2D component attached to this game object. In the update method, we are storing the value of time dot time into current time, just so we can see the value in the inspector. Then we are checking if the space key is already being held down during this frame. If it is, then we are checking if time dot time is greater than jump timestamp. If it is, then we add a force in the upwards direction. And finally, we set the value of jump timestamp to time dot time plus jump rate. Now this right here is basically our time rate logic. So let me give you an example with values over here. So initially jump timestamp is going to be zero. Let's say jump rate is two and time dot time is 15, meaning we are 15 seconds into the game. If during this frame, the space key is being pressed, then we check if time dot time is greater than jump timestamp. Since jump timestamp is zero and time dot time is 15 at that point, it's definitely greater. So a force will be added in the upwards direction. And finally, we set a new value for jump timestamp. The new value is time dot time, which is 15 plus jump rate, which is two. So the jump timestamp value will be 17. So in the next frame, even if the space key is being held down, when we check if time dot time is greater than jump timestamp, unless time dot time is greater than 17, this is not going to return true. And so an upwards force is not going to be added unless time dot time is actually greater than jump timestamp. So this is basically how our time rate logic works. So now let's go back to Unity and see this in action. Now, before we hit play, we need to set the value for jump rate. We're going to set the value to one and the value of jump force should be 1,500. Hit play. And now you'll see current time is increasing over here. This is basically the elapsed time, the amount of time that the game has been running. And this is greater than jump timestamp. So when I hit jump, I'm currently holding down the key and you can see the jump timestamp value is being updated and it's only jumping every one second. You can set the jump rate to five so that the player will only be able to jump once every five seconds. And then you'll notice whenever the player jumps, a new timestamp is set to five seconds from that time. So it's five seconds since the last jump. So yeah, that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to check out my other videos, head over to my channel and there should be two videos up on the screen right now as well. If you want to check out my music channel, the link should be up on the screen and in the description down below. If you want to help me out with the donation, my PayPal email address should be up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.